no matter how educated you are, we are, I am, we all make mistakes, but there is always room for correction and improvement. Dictionary is very much there. Alphabetically, it gives spelling, they are very spellings. A small table dictionary, Oxford, Cambridge, Merriam, Chambers, Webster, it has 50,000 entries. And averagely, each word has 10 meanings. So in all, we have half a million words in a good table dictionary. 50,000 multiplied by 10. For example, word math and take both have more than 56 meanings in dictionary with their use. Go, geo, go, how small word comprising two letters, it has 38 meanings. So you can find meanings in dictionary with different shapes of meaning. But the first thing is spelling. I have given here four words. Bad, that, bit, but. Only difference of while inside. Place where you go to retire to bed. Bad means to harap. Bit means to say or to order some money. Or in auction to offer some amount of money as a bidder. And but, very small, delicate building of a flower or a cattle. Kali Mukhri. So we make mistakes both by using vowels and consonants. We have five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and three half vowels, soft vowels, that W, H, Y. The remaining are consonants. In Sindhi Urdu grammar, we say harfe illat and harfe sahi. If we don't use them properly, we commit spelling mistakes. Double vowel, single vowel, double consonant, they are to be used very carefully, otherwise we make mistakes. Other problem are uh, English suffers from use of improper words. Words are there, but we use them mistakenly or wrongly. So in that sense they are called improper words, means wrong words. And depends how you put them down in a given sentence, in a spoken or written language. Singular subject verb agreement. Words of improper places. Then we have words, but we place them at improper places. For example, this word, only. It can be used as an adjective, as an adverb, and also as a noun. Her only son died in a war, means she had only one son. Her son only died in a war, means nobody else died except her son. Her son died only in war, means he undertook many adventures. Where did he die? War. So with the use of a word, one word only, at different places we get different meanings. So it depends how we place them. That is very important. It is called syntax or proper placement of word. You can have a look at it also. Listen to me. Long winding sentences. This is the stretch and this winding. Long sentences most of the time create crop problem. What we are going to put down? Subject, verb, complement, object, and so on. Whether in simple sentence, compound complex and compound complex. So I will try to write small sentences in plural language. The simpler, the better. The shorter, the better. Winding means zigzag. Taking idea in mind, then going ahead, then again diverging, creating confusion, then coming to the point. So it's winding is very long and very confounding. That is called winding sentence. It means zigzag or very long. So always be straight to the reader and to yourself. Use of passive voice and active voice. There are two voices, active and passive. In composition, we use passive voice most of the time. And in normal language, we use active voice, then passive voice. But we have to mix both. Use active when important, 
use passive where necessary. So both should be made in balance. Don't write very much passive voice in composition, that creates mass. For example, I was asked to go to school. Means somebody asked me to go to school. Simple past tense. Why I was asked? We have old sentences, Aslam eats a mango. Mango is eaten by Aslam. Why simply, why not Aslam eats a mango? Why passive voice? So I will try to be simple, active, and to the point. Writing, writing, winding long sentences, they create confusion. Then we have you know, the wrong forms of verbs. We have paradigms in verbs. For example, word paradigm. Word paradigm. Dictionary gives two meanings of word paradigm. One is the best example of something. And there is forms of word. For example, sit. This infinitive first form. It is simple past tense, sat. Then past participle, again sit. Then the third person singular represents indefinite tense. We add age to word, which is six. And fifth form is sitting present participle. Likewise, we have paradigm in adverbs and adjectives. Mainly, you have to mind paradigm verb, right form. Normally, we are saying that adding ed to make simple past tense. That's not fair, it's all verbs. For example, if you add s a y plus ed, this will make something silly. Quite understand. There's no words like said or said in it, or paid or paid. So we have to see what is the right form of verb in simple past tense, past participle, simple indefinite tense, and present participle. Again, you have to see that what are the proper forms of adjective and adverb. There are two parts of the speech which have degrees, com positive, comparative, and superlative. And some are made irregularly, some are made by. For example, good. Its adverb is well. How do you feel? How did you do it? How could you take it? Well. So good is adjective. It's comparative better, superlative best. Again, I, if I say you look well, doesn't mean that we are looking as well. You look well to me means you look healthy. Again, adjective. So with same spelling, words have different meanings and connotations and they are known as homonyms. Words have the same sound homophones. So we have to see that where are we going. Then we have subject verb disagreement. Normally, and plural subject is plural verb. But in some cases we have to be very much mindful. For example, collective noun, jury, board of governors, committee, so we have to see how they are used. If they mean prayer card is going, government is not going.
Coming back to topic subject, love disagreement. It's very important. Singular subject takes singular verb and plural takes plural verb. But sometimes we have to write about collective noun, like committee, jury, board of governors, and so on. If I mean jury, means people having pretty good knowledge about law and they know how to deal with legal matters, they simply sit in court of law and give their verdict, which is their opinion. They are not supposed to give judgment. It's a function of the judge or magistrate or justice. So when we use jury as singular noun collective, verb is singular. The jury is in session. The jury gives its verdict today. But when jury is no more entity or united or a body, it becomes people, persons, more than one. In that case, jury takes verb plural, pronoun also plural. So this makes a plural jury are divided in their verdict with somewhat of the one opinion, some of the other. The opinion was verdict was not unanimous. They were divided in their opinion. So we have to be very much mindful whether I am using correct now, singular or plural. Then use of improper tenses. Tense means tempus, time. Some people say there are more than 50 tenses, 100 and so on. There are only three main tenses. And each tense is divided into four. Simple, continuous, present continuous, and perfect continuous. In every tense, three multiple and four, we have twelve tenses. And they take very important place in writing. Your verb, your form of tense, verb should coincide to give proper right meaning. Otherwise, the sentence will communicate in mass or jumble. Then we have use of muddling or mixing of tenses in sentences. There are two sentences, three tenses, more than that. Depends what you are writing about. If you are writing a simple sentence, this will can take one word. Compound may take one or two words. And complex may take more than two or three words. So it depends how you communicate. For example, I got up early in the morning and washed myself or took bath. So both verbs should be simple, past tense. But if there is a sentence or communication, one sense is about past and one is let past. One should be in simple past tense, means past perfect. I found the bag that I had lost last week. It means I lost in the past, now found it. One should be in simple past tense, one in past perfect tense. So it all depends how you read. When you undertake intensive reading and extensive reading, you come to know how to use words, verbs, tenses, and so on. And the concept becomes very clear. A good readers are leaders. The more you read, the more you come to know about things around, or things in your mind, or things what other people have put down before you as a reader. Wrong use of mixing and wrong use of punctuation marks, especially comma, for example. Full stop, comma, semicolon, hyphen, dash, sign up, interrogation, exclamation, single comma, double comma. Bracket. There are about 11. Punctuation means stopping. You have to stop at proper places so that the reader or writer can communicate you properly and you have to make a good sense of what is going on or what is spoken or what is written there. For example, this comma has 13 uses. 13 uses. I put down a sentence and I ask, also ask you to put it down. Right on the list. Panda comes, eats, shoots, and leaves. Now let me tell you, Panda is a kind of bear, snow bear, with white hair on its body. So panda comes, eats, shoots and leaves. What idea do you get from the sentence? 
a person has no knowledge about your zoology, he might think that panda is a kind of hunter. He shoots something, eats something, and, and then leaves. It is a hunter. It's not a hunter. I now put down two commas. Still there is confusion. Panda comes, eats, shoots and leaves. Means panda comes up to some place, eats something, then fires with a gun or pistol and then leaves. Again, if we remove this, now this makes sense. Shoots is very small leaves, very delicate flower and plants which are now taking root and going up. Chodi chodi pose a kompa, kacha buta, or ye leaves mana patte. Panda comes, what does it eat? Eats, shoots and leaves. Ye one action, this action of eating something. Now this makes sense. If we re remove this too, this makes it means panda is a hunter. If we put this like, it means panda is an animal, comes somewhere, eats, what does it eat? Shoots and leaves. Now it makes sense. Now it is correct. So putting down wrong comma at the right wrong place, dig mass, it is confusion. So you have to be very careful about this thing. For example, man is to air for a gift divine. Come. Galati ka hum insan ka bhagwan ka maaf karna rahman ka. So these commas put in the right place, they make sense. Otherwise they create confusion. Or it is kind of just mass in the sentence. You really cannot understand what you mean. What have you written down or put down? Then we have wrong use of public mass, comma, improper use of small letters and capital letters. When you write a line of poetry, in every line of poetry you are supposed to write first letter capital. If there are proper noun, proper adjectives, write in capital. If the beginning of the sentence, no matter what part of your speech it is, you are supposed to write capital letter. So these are some of the things. When you write some title, some position, some job, some caption of a newspaper, you are supposed to put down capital letter. It's still very important. Also, Use of informal words. In dictionary we find a scores of informal words, means non-standard words. You can use them in spoken language, in messages, in informal kind of writing, but when it comes to formal writing or formal speech, always use formal words, not informal. Formal means not standard, not accepted in good communication, maybe written or spoken. Then we have again excessive use of phrases and idioms. Use of informal phrases. In English there are about 25,000 phrases and idioms. Phrase is a combination of two or three words that give some special sense in the sentence. For example, if I walk through this passage, I go through this passage. But if I take a manuscript, a written scripture or a book, or printed matter, I read it, it means I go through it. Go through means to study or read. So out of 25,000, we have 19,000 phrase idioms. They are standard or formal. 6,000 are non-standard or informal. So we have to be very careful what kind of phrase or idiom we use. Phrases and idioms are just related to one another. But there is some difference. When some part of his speech or words gives a special meaning, especially hidden meaning, that is called idiom. For example, to carry coal to Newcastle. Now coal and Newcastle, what relationship they have? It means either in Newcastle, upon the time in England, is a city where there is plenty of coal already available there, or no coal, coal is not needed there. It means to take a thing, to a place where it is already available or it is not needed. What is one lejana to pen bakas and mojuda yasudrut? It is called a carry call to Newcastle. On the sword of Demopolis was a great warrior. Where, whenever he wanted to fight with somebody, he was a great danger. Life hazard. 
So people dead it is soft. So it means a constant and dandy that can happen any time. So there's no gap of this and so they are idiomatically. So you can see whether it is phrase or idiom. And it is very important to distinguish between them. Normally they have very close relationship and meaning. Excessive use of phrase and idioms. No doubt there are phrase and idioms. Now every day in daily time you'll find several phrase idioms written. Some in the very caption at the beginning in the top of the first page. And they are very good. For example, lone wolf about Zenith, which is a person who wants to remain isolated or solitary or alone and doesn't want company of other people. That person is called lone wolf. Akela Lehnevala, the high person. Dhanpa high person. This is the phrase you can both say. And when you come by these phrase idioms, when you read a newspaper, a good book, a good bulletin, a good newsletter, and read a dictionary about the proper meaning and use. Use of adverbs instead of adjectives. There are two parts of the speech, as I said earlier. They have degrees. Positive, comparative, and superlative. And these two parts of the speech are adjective and adverb. And we have to be very careful to identify adjectives and adverbs. Normally adverb takes in y in the end. Slow, slowly, rough, roughly, cunning, cunningly, immediate, immediately, soft, soft. But not all adverbs take in y after they, for example, fast. We can't add in my grade. They know what fast is in modern English. So we have to be very careful. Hard. With positive sense, you can't add in my to it. This will give negative sense. He works hard. How does he work? Hard. Adverb. He undertakes hard work. What kind of work? Hard. Adverb. If we add in my to it, this will make negative sense. He hardly comes on Sunday. He hardly rises early in the morning. He hardly takes tea with me. Hardly mana bhavushka. This case is, gai bagai, kabhi kabha, negative mana dhika. Mana positive sense me kabhi be invited? Nahi dhika. So, half of the language. What are we getting? German, Dutch, Swedish, Persian, Arabic, Sindhi, Urdu, Punjabi, English. Half of the language comprises vocabulary. And vocabulary to present parts of his speech or words of his speech. If you are good at part of his speech, half of the game, half of the thing, or half of the pattern is done to get over your problem. Because you know how to use parts of his speech, word, their proper places, and then connotation and denotation, importance of given sentence may be written out, spoken. Then we have use of adjectives instead of adverbs and vice versa. If you are supposed to write adverb, mind that you are putting down adverb. If you are using adjective, mind that you are using adjective. Because sometimes both are confounding. They can get mass if you don't take care of their proper use. Because they are related and most of the adverbs are formed from adjectives. From what? There are more than 50 ways of forming adjectives. They are in the dictionary. But you won't find in one book, maybe, some writers do that. And you are part enough to give that in about one table or two or three pages. Normally, dictionary gives us adjective and from adjective you get adverbs. So there are more than 50 ways of formation of adjectives from verbs. Now, Verb and so on. For example, speed. This verb as was now. From it we have speedy, speedy car adjective. The car went speedily. Mentioned in a speed. This will be adverb. Speed, then I, then I. Again, I would say main thing that counts very much in English language is the word, its spelling, and its formation. It is called formation of words. A good dictionary gives a good extensive information about formation of words. Prefix, root, suffix. For 
capture that means down quite base of something with bed of ocean bed of water bed of canal or place where you go to die to bed so we are em with to the inside in that mazmer hona samay in bad means to the inside great place of the bad is that great thing in that it is point which mazmer samay or content so for a fee from bad this root or is came base word em is prefix and ded is suffix so this is called art of formation of words from nouns we get words from adjectives we get adverbs and and so on normally we say the eighth part of his speech but actually we are nine the ninth one is articles this is very important why most of the candidates fail english the third reason behind because the poets they work very hard go to karachi salabad lahor and they spend lot of money time and energy as well depend on hotel meals they spoil their health but as a result they bad effect because the poets people who are good at english right from beginning or can improve it and the latter stages they go very well very well now Recently, there was an exam about two months back. So, four years back, I remember there was given a special chance for candidates to take this exam because seats were available and same as Baroche stuff. And many people got through and got positions. Now they are going to retire or maybe they have died. Now about two months back, again that kind of exam was given by Public Service Commission Central Government. Many posts. In Baroche's analysis, the outline method, and I hope many good people, many a good heart of them, they will get through and get positions. So you have to be good at English life, especially, and when you read it extensively and intensively, you also become very good at English speaking. No problem. They don't want you to be great in school like Bach or John Milton or William Shakespeare or Allah my God and so on. They simply want to communicate your ideas. The simpler the better. Maybe one thousand word essay on good topic. Now the things have quite changed. There is a great change in this exam. Subject formation, grouping has not changed. Also, there is a kind of essay they are very difficult to write on. But if you are an avid reader, keen reader, you get ideas and like that practice, practice makes the perfect. Then you go very well. No matter, not only one essay, you can write two or three essays out of ten or eight. For sure. Then we have use of bombast. Bombast is a word which sound important but have a little meaning. Obviously, they look very beautiful, sound very good, but they have no importance or any use in the given structure. So that is simply spelling, spelling ink on the piece of paper, nothing more than that. To see that what I am writing is the point, is the right one or not, or use to impress people. It is used only to impress people. It doesn't have any important meaning or any use. Then we have <coughs> use of high-flown language. High-flown language and ideas, very grand and complicated ideas are called high-flown language. You are supposed to write simply, but you write legal language, scientific language, agricultural language, or other kind of phrase which is not related to what the topic is. That is called bombast, or that is called high flown language. It means language and ideas very grand and complicated, especially they are called bombastic. What are they called? Bombastic. <laughs> Plagiarism. It's a very important thing. We all read from books, newspapers, journals, periodicals. There are so many, lot of matter to go through. When we pass somebody's ideas and write them at our own, that is called academic theft or dishonesty. For example, I give example of Plato, a starter, or some politician or orator. 
I should quote it. Either I should quote it in original words, or at least I should recognize or acknowledge or write that this idea I have borrowed from this author. There are two ways of acknowledging idea. One is writing exact word in inverted commas, and one is writing about the name of the person from where you have borrowed the idea. It may be book or person, maybe religious, maybe political, economic, or some other gender. Well, for the use of improper clauses, combination of sentences have subject and verb is called clause. In law, it is a kind of part or article or shape of part that is called clause in law. Also, article in law is there. This line over here are our articles. This is also article. In grammar, three articles. And what do we buy from your domestic use, grocery, that is also article. Here article means a thing that you are writing about. Maybe small essay, maybe critic, maybe article, maybe some other kind of passage. So it is a kind of exercise of writing something on some topic. The classes we have kind of three classes, principal class or if main class, other is dependent class, means secondary class. The third one when you go over and join ideas together in a compound sentence or complex sentence, you get connecting, you get connecting class or you linking class and that is called coordinating class. Write down one sentence please, I like to write. She got up early in the morning. She got up early in the morning. And mad bar. And mad bar. Mad bar is someone who set out. And mad bar. The church. The church. As I said, this. Having written some letters. Having written some letters, having written, written some letters, I married them. Having written some letters, I married them. The first part of the sentence doesn't take any subject. The next part says complete the sense that who who wrote the letters? I wrote them. And what did I do with them? I married them. Married them. This is simple sentence. This is simple sentence. If I join two clauses and but or some other part of it, then my compound sentence. If I use relative pronoun or relative adverb, this will be my complex sentence. If I join two complex sentences, it will be compound complex sentence. So four kind of sentences. So this comes through grammar. And I will see that you are doing well and going well. Instead of just Take a leap in the dark, have some proper planning, some time, some timetable, and some proper way of work. And that is very important. That will take you in the right direction and be success. Then we have misplaced classes. Classes when misplaced, they make mess. Write down a sentence, please. The guest, G U S T S, took test. The guest took tea. I had to match with them. The guest took tea. I had to match with them. No, sense is there. I have been host. I made tea for guests and served them. But we keep saying. Write down. I serve tea to guests. I serve tea to guests. That I made myself. That I made myself. This creates some sense, no confusion. But remember that when actions take place one after the other, the sequence and simple past tense, always use simple past. But when the vacuum breaks, one after the other, one will be 
take a bath, my smash button. Right now. I found the bag. I found the bag that I had lost. I found the bag that I had lost a last week in AST. It means I lost last week and found now. One in simple past, one in past, perfect. So it is very important to see what kind of tense you are using and what kind of verb you are putting down. That is very important. Grammar errors, grammatical. Some people say we can go with English without having any knowledge of grammar. That's impossible. When it comes to business writing, commercial writing, technical writing, scientific writing, or any kind of legal writing of this kind of exam you are going to take, inshallah, you need to have very good knowledge about these things, grammar rules. They are voice, narration, use of commas, and transformation, paraphrasing, creating something from your own, and also changing sentence from one form to another. That's very important. And they are about more than, I think, as a humble chief teacher, I would say, more than 500 rules, at least. Mine and match both. And you have to have mastery over them to get through with a good number of marks. And there are very good rules. We face so many difficulties. When you put the word in common, that much difficulty. You've got so many resources, devices, gadgets, and so many facilities. Everything is at your fingertips. You can make models. models. Omission, run on sentences. It is an accident when one bogey overlaps the other, one branch of the world of the other branch. There is a kind of academic or composition accident. It means one sentence remains incomplete and you begin writing and the sentence. Then run on sentences. That is in incomplete writing and also run on sentences. This creates very serious. Omission of Parishtah. I have seen some people writing, doing this thing, even from right from Pashir Chayme, and also we have one through the papers of commission. I think this is very, it's a blunder. Put down Parishtah, very sentence names. If you want to join two sentences, having a true meaning, you can use semicolon. But Parishtah is very important. If you can join two sentences semicolon, you can put them down separately with full stop. That will make a good idea. Writing sentence with semicolon is not wrong, but that creates some what? Difficulty for the reader. So if there's provision of writing two simple sentences, or with full stop and going ahead, that will be advisable. Writing without definite ideas in mind. I read something somewhere, I share with you. Great people talk about ideas. Medium sized people, average people talk about things around. Common people talk about people. My voice, I have voice of greatness. So I always think about great ideas. Where do these great ideas come from? But the position, they come from extensive reading. The more you read, the more you come to know about ideas. With ideas, you need sense of creativity, how to create ideas. Writing about Pakistan, Kaidiasm, European culture, corporate culture, agriculture, scientific achievement and development and gracious, not difficult. But writing something abstract from your own, that is very important. We all read books, we all read journals, we all get information from observation, by seeing, by listening, by reading, by writing. But when it comes to write something from your own, in your own words, that is creativity. And that comes after deep observation and very close reading and practice. I give an example of a person. Joseph Conrad. Conrad. A great Irish writer. But he wrote a novel, Masterpiece in English. Name of the novel is Heart of Darkness. Heart of darkness. Let I just give you an example. How much pants did the people take? How hard they work on literature? Maybe novel, drama, poetry, 
children be stories of something else about the state or this show. This novel is about the people of Africa. How do they suffer? And their way of life. Poor condition, poverty, lack of food, absence of potable water and good diet. He wrote this novel about 70 times. 70. And once his friends asked me, Connor, what about the novel you are after? He said, I wish I would have had some more time to go and again and again, but I am hard pressed for time. I can't wait. Then he sent the novel to press for publication. Negative speakers, negative writers, many more, they work very hard and they wrote masterpieces, best sellers. This all comes to practice. And you people born this age are lucky or fortunate. You can make wonders of models with some hard work and proper application of the devices at your disposal. You are lucky. Then we have writing without definite, I mind, writing without definite sense. What do you want to communicate to the reader? There should be some meaning, some idea behind it, and that meaning is very important. Then we have writing haphazardly. We have certain words in English who don't have their own meaning. For example, half. It doesn't have separate meaning etymologically. It has prefix and suffix. For example, hapless means unfortunate. Mishap means something that takes place and you don't like it. It's unfortunate. Misfire. Maybe some accident, some ill incident, or some untoward incident that can be from half we have happening, happen. So most words don't have their own proper meaning, like this one. So half hazard means risk, apprehension, or danger that can take place any time. Joko, khatra, who have hazard, and So have hazard even without thinking properly. First thing, then write. Make an outline, think about it, jot it down, put it in proper place in order, then start writing. <coughs> writing without outline or plan. NCS exam and PCS outline carries 10 marks. Previously, NCS Public Service Commission, SA carried 50 marks. Now SA carries 100 marks. And central government, federal public circulation for the last 50 years, I think, SA carries 100 marks. And it is really strange and unfortunate and quite unlucky when candidates taking 39 marks, they are drawn. They are declared fail. No matter what, how great number you have in other subjects, 39 means fail. But there are hundreds of candidates having 38, 39, 37. They can't give, give a less mark to everybody. So you have to be very much careful about when you write with our ideas. Writing without for norms and standards of drafting or writing. I will give you some write up. It is about writing skills. This is just points how to mind by writing for preparing. But when writing, you have to mind the standard of writing or drafting. Whatever you write, as a freelancer or thoughtful writer, you have some outline before you and you have to follow it. In exam, outline says what you are going to write forward, what is coming forward, ahead. And body of the essay carries some, comprises some paragraphs about the outline. And you see, you see the outline has all the things in it about you going to communicate. And conclusion should, should it have something, anything about new. It should be all about the introduction and body. So it should be somewhat different in vocabulary. But ideas shouldn't vary or digression. Writing without mentioning coherence. Now coherence means the situation in which part of something fits together. That is called coherence. All parts should be fit together. If there is no coherence, there will be incoherence. It is quite against the right of norms. Then we have cohesion. Cohesion is unity. Cohesion means unity. If the idea is about democracy, 
everything should be about democracy. The ideas of repression, everything should be about, maybe far or against, you should elect it. If the idea is about agriculture, gaining revolution, means growing crops and bounty, abundant crops, bumper crops, everything should be about agriculture and agricultural development. So you have to see that you are going well. Also sequence means order of events that have just said to happen or should happen in a proper way. That is called sequence. So can the rough process connected life parts of a chain, parts of a chain to make a whole, that's called sequence. Writing without mentioning a sequence of ideas, now we, I go on read second page. Digression from the subject. When we digress, it means we are just diverted from the topic. When you divert from the topic, it means you go against the topic. That is called digression. Digression means go away or go away from the topic. You should stick to the topic. If there is something coming about the topic, maybe adverse or far, it should relate to the topic, not completely away from it. <laughs> also, redundancy. Redundancy is a state of being not being necessary or useful. You use words which are not necessary or useful, it means you are going redundant. Means idea that are not very much useful or necessary. And also, we have word repetitive, repetitive circumlocution, where you use more words than necessary, that is called circumlocution. If 50 words are needed, so you go beyond the limit, that is circumlocution. It is also called wordiness. Wordiness means to use more words than they are necessary or required. Wordiness. It is called wordiness. And also unnecessary repetition. In composition, if you want to stress something or emphasize something, you can repeat it once or twice, that's all. But don't repeat the same thing again and again. That will create mass. That will go down the standard of the right composition of AC. So see that you are not repeating things unnecessarily. That's very important. <coughs> Repeated use of words, for example, you use word account again and again. For example, account means detail. Account means detail. Go on changing words. Don't use the same word again and again. Not, no mistake, no bad thing, but this will create idea in the mind that the reader, that you are no, you know only one word about the same thing. Again, without repeating it. So you have, should have variety of it. For example, bad, ugly, improper, inadvisable, impertinent, Almost they have similar meaning, but you are supposed to use properly where should come ugly, where should come improper, where should come advertisement, and where should come bad or important. You have to mind them. There are books on usage and they are in plenty available market. Even your mobile phone, your your Facebook, your the book you have at, on your table, even your calculator and devices. They give you plenty of knowledge about vocabulary. And mind that this is a trigger. This is a trigger. You should have a good mastery about it. They comprise synonym, antonym, homonym, acronym, initials, abbreviations, homophone. Very important. Vocabulary. If you have a great store of vocabulary, you are rich enough. Rich enough in composition and in spoken English. <laughs> use of jargon, use of jargon and critics. Write down please. Jargon. Words or expressions. Words or expressions.
used by a particular profession words are expressions used by a particular profession means law hai business hai technical writing hai scientific a profession here i repeat words are expression used by a particular profession and are difficult and are difficult to understand to understand for others to understand and are difficult for others to understand and are difficult for others to understand such kind of writing is called jargon you are writing about some academic writing and you are giving examples of agriculture or science or technology or computer that are bad to be confused so proper alphabets ka matlab jo ki fir se sabse badhi hai then we have use of index right on index index is over used proverb or saying or maxim that doesn't make any sense in social context or other composition right on index a phrase or idea a phrase or idea a phrase or idea that has been used that has been used so often that it no longer has much meaning that it no longer has much meaning and is not interesting i repeat a phrase or an idea that has been used so often that it no longer has much meaning and is no and is not interesting as a makola kahwa jo kapot samar hue aur uski maan koi nahi example dekhe i don't them she taught it she taught it Literal means to go fast. Horse trots. What are those kind of guys? Trot. Yeah, man, trotted. Me na explain. Say. Yeah, trot. Man, say. Explain. She trotted. <coughs> She trotted. She trotted out the old cricks. She trotted out the old crick. C A C A I C H E. That. A traveler, a traveler, shared is a traveler. How? When you express something bad with somebody and you suffer from it, you in a sense you have you have your burden or half of your grievance. किसी से दुख का इजहार करना ऐसा है कि आपका दुख आधा हो गया शेयर हो गया ए ट्रबल शेयर इज अ ट्रबल हार्ड हार्ड किसका माजी है इसका जिसने वाइफ बना बेबी बना ना इसका इसका वर्ब है इस, इसका वर्ब है हार्ड एच ए ए वी प्रोवर्ब समझ गया है If you express your grief to somebody with the idea that he or she will feel for you, that is having the grief. Dukh ka aadhar karna, dukh ka aadhar aadhar, bhool jaane ke baad. Ram ko kam ka. Unattractive and unimpressive introduction to the passage or wrong essay. Very important point. Your introduction to the essay should be very attractive. powerful very mighty in a sense this should carry all you are going to write ahead i said again and again introduction carries at least 10 marks and you put everybody everything down on a piece of paper one after the other in sequence you map very good as that is called outline very important thing is a plan or map you have you follow it one after the other it should be attractive not an impression or unattractive and repetition of exactly the same idea in conclusion of writers don't repeat the same idea in conclusion everything should be what you have already written it should have the conclusion only other words not new idea new thing in conclusion is very important 
both contrary and introduction, they carry weightiness. Besides, paragraph you are writing, following the outline. If you have written quotes without acknowledging them, again, this is a kind of plagiarism. You may borrow ideas, no problem, as many as you like, relevant, and put down at the proper place, but you are supposed to quote them. The source, maybe book, maybe article, maybe some journal, maybe newspaper, or some author or orator. <laughs> Writing too many quotes, see that it should contain your ideas, not quotes. If you go on quoting others' ideas, what you are going to write from your own, that will be a burdensome of the reader. And also there will be, there will lessen your credit of the essay. So mind that most of the essay should carry your ideas in your own words. Also write a relevant quotes. Quote is about politics, and essay is about economy. Quote is about war, essay is about peace. That will, that will be hodgepodge. That will be just leave in the dark. You are spilling ink on a piece of paper without any sense. Missing single in order commas and double in commas in quotations. When there is quotation within quotation, the first quotation should be double commas, inside quotation should be single commas. For example, a lawyer said, My client said, My client said, and not double. What did my client say? Single comma. So, comma and double comma, that should be very important. Also, breaking or splitting of words without keeping in mind that it's slab. Now, part of word in which a word is divided is called slab. In Sindhi Urdu, it is called pad. Go, sleep, come, sit, have, no, yes, they are monosyllables. So, even in parts of words, very speak or right. Administration. No matter how fast or slow you speak, it has four slabs. This is for one, three slabs. So when you come to write manuscript on the lab, this is DIS, CIP. Suppose now there is no space, you put this incomplete word and write line here. Not in the way that LI here and E here, or L here and N here, that will be wrong. So you have to break a word into slavers. You yeah, have slaver brother over here. As everything has delicacy and beauty. Writing also has some beauty. No matter what language it is, you have to bear in the rules or canons or beauty or principles or implications or way language is put down. That's very important. So slavers should be in proper way. Always try to write complete word this way. If you break up the word spirit, you put mind and slumber should be there. And remaining seven on the other paper. <coughs> Improper use, use breaking up the spirit words without keeping the word that drives slumbers. Improper use of compound words. Now in English we have two kinds of words. Simple words and compound. Compound word has I always hyphenated. We have hyphenated them. For example, hodgepodge or father-in-law. Three words. Father-in-law. Mother-in-law. Commander-in-chief. This should be hyphenated. Hyphenated. Also, we have some compound word adjectives. For example, bad written passion, a eh? bad written passion. These are important things. You can put them down. Look at them. A warm eaten, warm eaten bug. It's called moth you can get, moth you can get. Kiri is the point. A bad little passion is a passion who has been bad for a long time. Coffee has been the best thing that I have, good bad. A moth eaten book, a book eaten by worms or insects, would you find in book, the actual book. 
So this is called compound word adjective. It adds the meaning of noun, passion. This is compound word adjective adds the meaning of noun, book. So you have to see that the adjective is compound or simple word. A simple word may be a, o, and it, a, to, simple. Also simple. Encyclopedia. DIA, DEA, no response. Paraphernalia, a person's belongings. What everyone has. Paraphernalia. Maybe it's so long, it's a simple word. Word having no other slab or other part. Simple word. They are called simple word. Maybe join adjectives or word nouns. This, this way they make compound words. There are two kinds of simple and compound. <coughs> Improper use of definite article. We have three articles and this is definite. In most cases we don't use any article. The or the. When I mean with some wire sound, R sound, the elephant. The part, the orange, the owl, we pronounce the. But if there is no R sound, we pronounce the, the book, the college, the university, the boy, the girl. This is very important article. If you don't know its use, don't use it. Instead of making mistakes, leave it. If it's a customer, it is a customer. If it's a customer, this is also used as a zero article, means no article. When you mean man right from Adam and Islam to this day, you people, man is mortal and some honey. Women is rare or zayif. So when there is no article needed, it is called zero article. And we use this article without any thinking, thoughtlessly and mathematics. When you read it finds that you don't use a comma, proper use of proper word the proper place, right word in the right place, and also you make silly mistakes like a spelling, they will be just about it. They will heap up, heap up mistakes. And the reward you give, that will be very sad, very sorrowful. Okay? Improper use of Zero article, means no article. Writing without use of indentation. A space between line. In CSS and PCS, you gave as a book without line. That is called Lord Paper, R O W E G. And you have to see that your line goes straight. If your line goes up, down, up, down, you see or not. We were used to writing on paper that has no lines. So you have to mind write straight. And that is called indentation. Leaving a space between line is called indentation. A space left the beginning of the line of the paragraph. Improper use of nouns. Simple. Common noun, proper noun, collector noun, material noun, abstract noun, five kinds of noun. You have to judge what kind of noun I am going to write. Some abstract nouns, they take the article like honesty, piety, love, they are abstract noun, but when you specify them and put in prose as a writer, as an author, then you can put and specify them the way the authors do and see where this article is used and where it is not used. That is very important. Improper placement of adjectives. Adjectives always modify or add to the meaning of noun or pronoun. And there are seven kinds of adjectives. So you have to see, you have to see how, what kind of adjective I'm writing. Use of informal abbreviations, for example. Now, this is from your papers. Because, before, brother in law, between, this is not English. They create mass. 
They are not a standard or together, neither. You have to mind correct spelling, correct word. If you are short of time, you are maybe writing a message, or maybe some kind of essence, then you can put down in form me. But when it comes to formal writing, you have to mind the language rules, spelling, and the way it is rightly put down. Informal abusions, misuse of preposition, of all the parts of a speech, the most important, most difficult, and most useful part of a speech. Interesting is preposition. There are three kinds of preposition. Simple preposition, there are 37. Compound preposition, there are eight, like into, onto, along with, towards, there are eight. And compound and present preposition, they are hundreds in number. How many are they? Hundreds. Simple preposition, compound preposition, and present prepositions. And preposition used as present or equals. And there are hundreds of verbs that don't take preposition after them. For example, let us discuss the matter. Most people, even learned educated people, use with after discussion. Let us discuss matter with, discuss about. There is no preposition after discuss with this meaning. However, noun has the discussion about the matter was fruitful, or fruitless, or unnecessary, or van. So you have to see whether preposition is admissible or not. Then we have use of Misuse of preposition. Multiple direct object and indirect object. The person to whom a thing is given is indirect object. And thing given may be living or non living is called direct object. Right down to center space. Father gifted me a wristwatch. Father gifted me a wristwatch. Father gifted me a wristwatch for my birthday. Father gifted me a wristwatch for my birthday. You are not putting down anything, gentlemen. Do you not need to get? Yes. You, you lost part. Now, father is subject. What is the thing given in the gift? Wristwatch. It's a direct object. To whom it is given? Me. It is indirect object. Person or thing or any gift given, that is called direct object. Person to whom thing is given is indirect object. And person who is given is called subject. Both things, both objects can be written being right now. His father, his father. Gifted him a gifted him a deer, D double year heron, D double year heron, D double year heron. I'm not thing given is also living, and person to whom things is also living. Other example from Shakespeare's drama. The time passed. Prospero, ये हीरो का नाम है, बूढ़ा जो उसने जादूगर बताया और ओके, Prospero, handed, Prospero handed Miranda a hand, माना Miranda का हाथ दिया उसको, माना रिश्ते में Miranda's hand to Ferdinand, to Ferdinand, F E R D I N A N D. Prospero handed Miranda's hand to Ferdinand. Rishtai Azavan Babati Zara. Now, person given is living, and to whom is given? Ferdinand also living. So, this is direct, direct object. The so person given is indirect object, and thing given is direct object. But both are living. Even given person is, who gives is also. So this depends how where do you put down, down. Object may be more than two, more than three. Subject may be more than one, one than two. Depends what kind of center you are going to put 
down in the same given on different on different subjects on different objects depends on the structure of the sentence so you have to see what kind of sentence you are going to match same period compound complex compound complex maybe two three you have to get the adjective semicolon it depends on how you put it down so this all comes through a study not in a dream or through an sms it takes a lot of time but i once again i would like to repeat that if we could do it in 50 years you can do it in 5 years 5 years time and up by you you can make marks at marks because two new people have got devices we could have a dream of people in back you have got this back now things are completely revised you can make best of all those things at your disposal okay Merging of direct objects and indirect objects. Merging means mixing up. See that the object should be put down at the proper place. Normally, in a set of sentences, we put subject in the beginning, then write down words, then follow with the object and extension or complement of the sentence. For example, I go, I go there. I go there early in the morning. I go there early in the morning on foot. So how you elongate the sentence, or why does the idea depend on vocabulary? How you put it down? If there are separation of ideas or things, you need com. If you need to join two ideas, you need semicolon. If you want to write independent sentences and say earlier, you put down separate sentences. The simpler the better. The simpler. Don't don't be complicated. Improper use of collected nouns. Collected nouns are always used as singular, and they identify unity. Like jury, committee, board of governors, army, syndicate, such things. When they mean unity, means one thing, one subject, verb is singular. When they mean more than one, verb is plural. So see that I am putting down as one or two or more than that. Or one more than one, verb will be automatically plural when you write it. In proper use of forms of nouns and pronouns. Nouns have gender and number, singular or plural, masculine or feminine or neuter. Neither masculine nouns, and also we have certain nouns. They are names of materials, names of things unseen, like a spirit, soul, fairy, angels. They are unseen, but they are there. So you have to see what they know and put it down. And every pronoun has three forms: subjective. Objective and possessive. I'm talking about basic things. If you touch them in your books, you will go very well, very well. All the time, all the time, and you're coming here and learn something here, it will be fruitful only when you take responsibility of all these things. Because once you are here, you should make best of your time and your money because you're spending some time here, and time is precious, more precious than money is. But I agree. Pronouns, subjective. Objective and possessive. Three pronouns never change. You, it, and one. You, it, and one. May be active verbs or passive verbs. Direct nation or indirect nation. They never change. For example, a wasp bit me. A bhandi mujhe kata. I killed it. So it bit me. Usne mujhe kata. Maybe some fly. Maybe some wasp. Maybe scorpion. I killed it. जब उसने काटा था तो भी था जो मारा ये भी एक है। It never changes. You have me in distress. तुमने भी मदद की मुझे मदद दी। I have you in turn. मैंने भी एक टाइम वापसी भी आपकी मदद की। तो ये जो सब्जेक्ट भी है, ये आपके भी है। One should do one's duty. When you mean one, means he, she, it, सब इसमें आ गए, तो इसका पॉजिटिव केस one होगा, his और का भी नहीं। I will bring that paper of 40 marks this year, a special paper, and you will really feel 
greatly astonished how simple the paper is. I spoke about the paper in seminar. Chalice number of a paper hai. Jis jo khuda ki bande ne banaya Allah usko bhala karega. Usne aisa paper banaya jiske A level, O level achhi hogi. Chalice number kare, chalice number pass ho jayega. Pehle se copy hai, toh dur ki baat hai. Chalice, chalo 10 minus kare. Kitne hoye 10? 10 aur nahi pass hoye ke liye. कम अज कोई स्कोर बता ऐसा क्या जो बेसिक सही होंगे ना यू गो बैक वेरी बैक बेसिक अच्छी होनी चाहिए हमारा प्रॉब्लम बेसिक नहीं है फिर हम अपना बहुत खर्च करते हैं लाहौर में किराते हैं उधर उधर माँ बाप के पैसे खर्च करते हैं मजाया करते हैं होटल में रोटियाँ खाते हैं पेट खराब होता है फिर वापस आते हैं कई बच्चे हमारे कई शादी गए ही नहीं लाहौर लेकर पता ही ना पड़ा बस का किराया नहीं होता था अब डी आई लाइन का कर रहे किराया नहीं होता था ये कोई भाड़ा नहीं होता था एडजेक्टेड गरीब है बेटा आ गई नीच जो कुछ आवे बन ये मैं बेस्ट होते हैं अंडिकार से It never takes S to map plural, singular plural shape. Bread, it never takes S. D, a singular plural shape. A, a singular plural shape. But sometimes these things completely change. John Gosladi in Act 3 of Silver Box says, Magistrate asks him, why don't you look up your children? They are wrong in this way. Just airless and without any care or food or drink on their suffering. John said, "My Lord, my air have, my air have, airs have turned a bit of fever. I am jobless. I can't look after them. I am in trouble." It means when you mean air, dramatically in novel, in some story, you mean more than one air. You can use.